Grana Wheat Mini Bong, and welcome back to my channel where we look at all things Transformers and Transformers action figure related. So, today we're going to take a little look and do a little review of the Transformers Manga Volume 1. So, just to set the scene, I am actually a huge fan of manga, anime, and Japanese kind of stylings. Um, anyway, uh, I'm really like outside of the Transformers universe. I really like things like Fist of the North Star. Gaiva is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Uh, I also really like things like from back in the day, like Dune Megalopolis and you know all of the the original manga stuff. And with the modern day mangas, I kind of I kind of keep up with uh, well, so with the modern day anime, um, I kind of watch. Uh, some of the things that Netflix do, I watched like the the the, the Devilman Crybaby um, series. I thought that was fantastic. The art style was a bit was a bit crazy. Um, it wasn't like traditional anime, um, but I really enjoyed that. So I'm really really on board with the way that the Japanese do things, and the way that kind of a manga or an anime is uh, is set out and the kind of the kind of tropes, I guess, that you expect uh, with some of the, the more Japanese type things, and they are on full display on this. Uh, so definitely, uh, it's well within my realm of things I should like and things I should love. So I was very interested and excited to pick this up. So let's just start off by saying this is a manga. Uh, so a manga is the, the comic books that they do in Japan. Uh, classically, this is kind of a black and white styling of animation. I know that the front cover is color and there's some things going on inside that I'll show you. But manga is the comic book. Anime is different because anime is the animation uh, usually drawing from, certainly back in the day was drawing from mangas, especially with things like the Giver, Doom Megalopolis, uh, Devilman, all these kind of things. And the, the manga is what starts it. So the manga is the comic book. So during this review, there will be some spoilers uh, for the for the manga itself. Um, obviously, I'm going to go through some of the my highlights from the story, some of my highlights that I've I've found within this book, things I like, things I don't like. Show you some interesting points uh, so you can make your own mind during this. So if you don't want to have anything spoiled um, from this, I would maybe have, have turn this off now um, because I do plan on doing some little spoilers on this. So let's start by taking a look at the cover and the cover's got some pretty nice color art This is some of the only color really color art that you'll see in the in the entirety of the book And you've got Megs on here Prime or Convoy. You've got Zarek You've got a whole host of other characters uh, including some of the more Japanese styled ones here um, And it's really nice the cover is very inviting but I'll tell you now, not all of the cover, all of the uh, characters that are on the front cover are in the pages of this volume. So, bit of an odd start to start with, um, because you know why? Why is there why is there characters on the front cover that aren't within the book itself? So that's a little bit of an odd start uh, within itself. Um, next thing, we'll have a little look at the back. So, when we look at the back, uh, you see there's some some manga style art here so this is also released through viz media the viz do uh, a lot of the uh, japanese uh, manga stuff so this is the artwork that you see throughout it when you open it there's something a little bit different but then when you get into it this is the, the majority of the art that you see and um, you get you can see that this is made up of three or four different stories basically so there's the great transformer war fight super robot life form transformers and some other stuff within here as well. Um, next that you think you'll find out about this book is the spines in the in the wrong place. Uh, well, not in the wrong place, but Japanese books um, don't read the same way as English books. So if we were to open it, what I do like is if you open it the wrong way, uh, you do get a little. <laughs> You do get a little notice here saying you're reading the wrong way, <laughs> which I think is quite cool. Um, so they keep the, the kind of Japanese styling um, around on this. If you do read any mangas or uh, uh, 
yeah any mangas that you get usually from japan they do open up this way anyway so i like that the fact that they put that there um uh, so you open it up this way and when you read it you read from this page to this page and this way across so don't open it up like this and then start reading from here to here because the book won't make sense or even from here to here it's this way this way this way this way so a little bit of little bit of things that you need to know uh, when you open the book but i think that's a nice touch that they've still done that and then you get a, a nice little a nice little warning page here as well on opening the book you get a nice little prologue here you get told what where the chapters are but you get a nice little prologue here which is Kind of in like a monochrome type ready color. Um, the art style's a bit odd on this. You can see Max has got a massive conquer. Um, but this is just kind of a prologue letting you know uh, what happened. And it just really follows pretty much um, G1 kind of uh, normal way of thinking about things so if you've seen the first episode of transformers you know pretty much what the prologue is going to be each chapter is kind of separated by this nice autobot logo or a decepticon logo and then we get into what is the now the classic manga looking and i absolutely love the artwork here like i said i'm very used to reading uh, mangas with especially back in the day gaiva stuff and i try and keep as up to date with, with gaiva as i can um and i th this is so this for me is beautiful and i really like the way that um the japanese animation is a uh, japanese artwork is like this I, I absolutely love it as we go through it's really really cool to see so the artwork for me is an absolute bonus and you can see as we go through that this is just absolutely just fantastic classic uh it's almost timeless the way that it's it's done um, just that Japanese artwork that really brings everything to life on the page, even though it's without colour. And, you know, I love the IDW stuff. I love the Dreamwave stuff. Um, but, yeah, you can't be a bit of manga, just simple black and white drawings from back in the day. Really, really nice. So from the artwork point of view, really, really good. So story point of view, um, if we dip into that now, the stories in this are good, um, but this, I with this being volume one, I kind of thought that it would tell the linear story um, right from the beginning of the manga, um, you know, and you'd go through volume one, volume two, volume three, and you'd go through it. Now this jumps in. It sees it, it, it within the the animation series. This jumps in after just after season two, so just before the movie, which is fine because that is actually where the manga started. So they actually introduced themselves uh, on this by saying that it's on the back, isn't it? It says that they they are the Transformers from America, which is cool. Uh, and they introduce themselves and they they meet a young japanese child and then that japanese child helps them and he kind of fills the role that the kind of wiki family fills um, and that's all fine but what lets this book down is the fact that as you go through then it doesn't one story doesn't lead on to another so there's no real story or character development you're just given you kind of dropped in on a story and what it left me with was a feeling of, I want to know more. How did we get here? For instance, and this is a big spoiler, guys, now um, for something that's in this. And this is actually my most interesting and favorite part about this is we have a character in this that I actually didn't know about uh, before I kind of went into this. And this is a character called Gilthor. So you can see here, this is Gilthor. And this is Gilthor's alt mode. So I was really intrigued to know about this this character. But they kill it. <laughs> it ends so quickly. And you learn a little bit at the beginning here. This is how he's introduced to Go Colossal Soldier Gilthor. And you learn as the, the, the Quintessons built this guy uh, out of Starstream's laser cannons. And then they put Prime and 
uh, Megatron's dead body together or made it from the same Cybertronium as them to create Gilthor. So he's a, a complete melding of Prime and Megatron together. This is such an interesting character, but you get no build up. He's just kind of dropped in. Hi, this is Gilthor. This is the fight that they had with Gilthor. End. And you're like, I want to know more. I need to know more. So, yeah, with, with the fact that they don't have all the stories in this, that for me really lets it down. You just kind of dropped in. Okay, understand this. This is what's happening. Bang. Here's how they solved it. Done. And for me, uh, it just means that I, 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 they feel more like throwaway stories. And I know that some of them were because they were just packing. Um, they, were, they were kind of packings with some of the um, toys and things like this just to bring them more life but I just believe that I, after doing some more research I know there's more there was more build up to stories like that uh, within TV magazine and things like this so I wish they'd included more detail another thing about this book is that you get a very Japanese version of the storytelling so if you've ever read kind of the Marvel Transformers or even the IDW I think you're used to maybe a kind of more Western style uh, trans uh, way of telling the Transformers stories this has a very Japanese twist on everything so there's things that happen in this book that wouldn't happen in a normal media if you watch uh, even I guess Power Rangers or if you have even read any of the um, Fist of the North Star and things like this when they do a super attack they call out their super attack <laughs> so you get things like this in this that you've never seen Transformers do within the normal realm of media so if they're attacking you get things like Prime and Magnus double finish and you get things like Minibot spiral Minibot team spiral attack and all this so you get them calling out um their kind of transform <laughs> their transformations you get them calling out their their major attacks and things like this which obviously we don't get oh, revolver laser which we don't get too much of uh, in more western style media but it's nice it's it's the japanese way of doing things as i say i'm i'm fully accustomed to this and i quite like it some of the other things we get that we haven't seen before is you get like this this extra base type mode here um for hot spots so he transforms into a, a base here and starts to, to fix people so you get to see some things that we've never seen before from some robots um and it's quite interesting you, you do get another one if i can't find the page right now where autobot combiners combine with decepticon combiners to blow them off they turn into their they blow their legs off and then combine with the decepticons legs to shoot them off into space which is which is quite interesting to see so there's some some really nice um, interesting ideas in this uh as you go through it's that that's quite fun the book ends kind of just before uh the headmasters come into it so it come in, come into the headmasters kind of cartoon so this is almost like a prologue i guess to the headmasters japanese um cartoon so you can see them getting on a spaceship and heading off towards cybertron and then at the end we do get some nice illustrations here so we get some color illustrations here and it says where they came from so there's some nice artwork with the dates that these came in so this is all this was from tv magazine and you get so this is really nice all of this artwork if you like to see some of the classic g1 artwork on this uh, it's pretty pretty cool um i really like this kind of takedown of megatron and what he looks like inside i think that's pretty cool it's a pretty cool way of doing things um so yeah all in all this this artwork's not too bad at the end so all in all, would I advise that you pick this book up? For me, it depends on what you want. I personally, even though there is now volume two out, I can't see myself picking volume two up right now. I picked this up on Amazon, I think for about £10, which is about $15, um, which was quite good. And I guess if, if I really wanted to, if I, I would want to look at it before I picked up volume two. I, I like to have storytelling. I don't want to just dip into the stories. I want to know more. I don't see 
I, although I learned about Gilthor, um, which is a pretty cool, and apparently there's a, a he was also in Creo, which is the only other time you've seen we've seen him in media as well. Um, that was quite interesting, but other than that, I don't think I got much out of this. This is a love letter to the manga, and it touches all the notes that we would expect from a Japanese Transformers manga. It's nice to have on my shelf. I can't see myself picking it up and reading it again, and I think I would stick more with the IDW stuff if I'm going to buy some more Transformers reading. And actually, straight off the back, off the back of getting this, finishing this, sorry, I have bought the IDW um, collection volume one. So for me, this is this is something that's nice to have, uh, but I can't see myself right now picking up volume two, uh, just because if it was if if they had done everything that was released instead of just kind of the highlights then I'd probably be more uh, entitled to pick it up because I did enjoy the storytelling I just wanted to know more guys what do you think of this uh, have you picked this up are you interested in picking this up did you like the, uh, the the stories that were told and the different way of seeing the Transformers and the different way that it was told um, what do you think about the stories that were told within it would you like to have seen a bit more depth let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you in my next video. Alright guys, in a bit, peace!